Acclaimed science fiction author Ursula K. Le Guin published The Lathe of Heaven in 1971. It follows a character whose dreams can change reality. The novel won top honors in the science fiction category, including the Hugo and Nebula Awards and was adapted into two films. Le Guin looks at human greed and ambition, the limits of human intervention for social good, and the nature of reality. The novel opens with a sweeping account of the oceans around Portland, Oregon, where the novel plays out. The year is 2002. Global warming has diminished the quality of life for everyone, even the wealthy. The rain is constant. With more than 3 million people living within its borders, many Portlanders cannot get enough protein and have noticeably weak muscles. The culture has not progressed much from the 1970s, just inequality between the uber-rich and uber-poor has increased. The global political situation is more unstable, with massive wars raging in the Middle East. 30-year-old George Orr can change reality through his dreams. After George's dreams have created a new reality, he is the only one on Earth who can still recall the previous reality. When he was 16, he learned that some of his dreams came true when he inadvertently killed his aunt in a car accident. To ensure nothing like that happens again, he avoids dreaming by taking various drugs. He is suicidal when his landlord calls the medics after he overdoses. Once recovered, George is given the choice to clean up his drug use, be thrown into an asylum, or volunteer for psychiatric drug abuse rehab. At the psychiatric ward, George meets Dr. William Haber, a formidable-looking sleep researcher who takes pride in his psychiatric skills to manipulate patients. Much of the novel takes place in the doctor's ordinary, windowless office in Portland. William does not initially believe George, but with enough conversations and tests, William starts to see that George might be telling the truth. William is excited at these possibilities, and decides to harness George's power for the social good. William uses a brainwave generator he calls the Augmenter. The machine helps George sleep and encourages him to produce a wide range of worlds. All of these worlds are based on Gwyn's wide-ranging knowledge of philosophical utopias and dystopias. In one world, George, as orchestrated by William, is to dream that everyone has light, gray skin so racism cannot exist. The unintended consequence is that mixed-race children no longer exist. William tells George to solve the overpopulation program by dreaming up a plaque. Things get out of hand and the world's population plummets from 7 to 1 billion. George next dreams up a way for a peace on Earth to be real. The only thing that seems to unite all of humanity is an alien colonization of the moon. This was not part of William's plan and he is frustrated that he cannot entirely control George's dreams. George eventually seeks out a lawyer, Heather Lalash, to defend him from William's constant thirst for power. Though William claims he only wants to help the world, with each dream, William's wealth and status increases. George's material wealth has also improved with William's guidance, but he wants his freedom back and to distance himself from William's power-hungry nature. Heather joins George for one of his therapy sessions, and quickly comprehends the bind that George is in. In one dream, George falls in love and marries Heather. Freaked out by William's encroachments, George dreams that he runs away to his cabin in the woods. Privately, George tells Heather that the real world was destroyed in a major nuclear war in 1998. Close to death, George dreamed the world back into existence. He doubts that anything he experiences now is real. Heather is also gifted with a multiple memory, which her conversations with George bring out. She recalls a former husband, a pilot who died in a war in the Middle East, her memory is still in Coet though, and she cannot be sure if her husband did not actually die right before the truce that ended the alien war. Like William, Heather wants to improve the world and encourages George to dream that the aliens are no longer on the moon, and that Dr. William Harbour actually wants to treat George's condition, not use him for political gain. She helps George reach a trance state through hypnosis, a skill she learned in college. His dream is fulfilled, but with the terrible side effect that the aliens have invaded Earth instead. In one fight, the aliens bomb Mount Hood, a dormant volcano in northern Oregon that, because of the blasts, begins to erupt again, with the planet on the brink of destruction. Heather and George return to William's therapeutic practice for guidance on how to harness George's dreaming potential. William helps George for some time. George dreams that the aliens are peaceful. He also learns that the aliens thrive in the dream state. One gives George a secret word, Iaclu, that will help him should any of his dreams turn sinister. Annoyed by George's resistance to his vision of utopia, William decides to hypnotize George and control George's brain for his own use. 
William's first dream is so disruptive to the universe that it threatens to disband all of the versions of reality altogether. George, using all his willpower and courage, is able to turn the Augmenter off, thus ending William's rule. Reality is saved, but disparate parts now interact within other worlds. William's mind burns itself up and he is left in a schizophrenic catatonic state. George meets the original version of Heather. Her memory of him is dim, but it is hinted that they will be able to lead a life together. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.